This is the hustle. Watch it. Here come the hustle. Here it comes. Call yourself the um, African Pan African, whatever that bullshit ass fucking hustle ass line you fucking say. Fucking grind ball, man. Old days, man. Back in the day, I would have gave you props like, God damn, that's a cold ass hustle. Nigga, I probably would have joined in with your ass. I'd be like, God damn, that's a cold ass hustle, nigga. How you, let me get in on that shit. But now, when you look back at it, man, and see all the people that you let down and hurt and took advantage of that took money from that they could have used for something else for their kids or whatever you just crush their shit bro anti-afro spengalis it is a hustle people it's a hustle that has failed miserably nonetheless it is a hustle that umar has been running that has affected many innocent people who had nothing but good intentions so this hustle will continue to be exposed who you heard from was Pookie X, making it very clear that anyone with even half volume of garden variety common sense knows this is nothing but a failed hustle. Umar is not prosperous because of this hustle. He's continuing to beg for more money. So specifically, I'm coming on here to shed light additional light on the IRS and the latest lies that Umar is now telling on the IRS specifically for the purpose of trying to generate this agent card, pulling the agent card. And I'm going to do another video about a supposed FBI agent contacting an Umarian, but I'll get into that in another video. But for now, I want to give some details before I do that. I would like for you all to hear two distinctly different statements, which means again, Umar has lied. And number two, Umar has been cold busted in a lie. So watch the screen and I will identify what year and what month the statement came. Stay tuned and I will return. The IRS never served notice that we had been approved for tax exemption. So guess what I'm going to say? They sabotaged this too. They couldn't refuse the tax exemption. So they simply said, we're not going to let him know that he got the tax exemption. We find out about the tax exemption after chasing down the IRS officer responsible for FDMG's tax exempt application. We was calling them, emailing them, both me and my accountant professional accounting working on this with me. And then we come to find out later that the IRS withdrew FDMG's tax exemption before they even told us we had a tax exemption. So that's set up number two. So where are we right now? Right now we are in the process of applying to reinstate the tax exemption. Now, when you look on the GoFundMe, we only raised 160, but most of my donations have been mail-in checks and mm -hmm. money orders. People don't check, don't trust the internet. Go Puff, I know you're listening, Puff. Oh yeah, all my rappers on out Revolt there. TV right now. I, I, I need gonna, that check. It's, it's gonna be hard. And, and we tax exempt, so they can write it off on their taxes. And we tax exempt. And we tax exempt. And we tax exempt. And we tax exempt. Okay, for those of you who weren't actually looking at the screen, maybe you were driving. The first statement comes from 2019 in November when Umar was on another canned, prepped interview, making claims, specifically lies about the Internal Revenue Service. And then the second clip came from the Breakfast Club interview, the first interview Umar Johnson did on the Breakfast Club in 2015. Okay, so in 2019, I wanna make very clear, Umar is claiming that he was never aware of the Internal Revenue Service granting the non-existent FDMG. When I say non-existent, there was never an FDMG. It's always been Umar, Umar slash FDMG. Okay, so he's claiming they were never notified. <laughs> Are you serious, people? Despite the fact that Umar used this nonprofit tax status to swindle money 
on GoFundMe to get a two or 3% fee administered, which is administered to charities and nonprofits. Although Umar ended up lying to the black community saying GoFundMe was taking 15%. He is such a liar. He had a two or 3% fee applied because he had nonprofit status. Most of the time he was running the GoFundMe scam. But here's something else that Umar never imagined would materialize simply because he could, in his mind, continue stealing from abusing, pillaging the black community and targeting single black mothers and nobody would ever say anything. He was much too comfortable. He never thought that the federal government would give a hoot and he thought he would just have the GoFundMe's and all these scam bagging what what do they call um crowdfunding campaigns but look at something else that is very clear and proves even more how much umar lied when he said he had no idea we have tax exempt status and then the irs never told us okay let's look at this people look here umar's federal tax lien from the Internal Revenue Service in 2017. Please tell us, people, look on the screen and look at the P.O. box that is being used. This is the mailing address that Umar was using for the FDMG scam never existed school. The same P.O. box. Look at it very carefully. It's a little bit, well, you can see the number and it's in Philadelphia. Look at it, people. Look very carefully what P.O. box is being used. What is this, the term that people say? I'll wait. I'm waiting. You see. Now we come to the state of Pennsylvania, Umar Johnson's tax lien from May 2017. What is the address that appears on this notice, people? And again, these two documents are public access. Once you have a tax lien, that is public knowledge. Look carefully at the P.O. box that is being used. I'll wait, as they say. Very clear, the same P.O. box. Now we're gonna move over to a post from Facebook, and I did cover up the photo because it is a child. God, I would never have a child posted on any of my videos regardless of the YouTube movement or the YouTube new regulations it's disgusting having Umar and a child in the same picture or Umar using a picture of a child nonetheless the focus is September 2014 pray tell what exactly do you see here as the P.O. box that Umar is using to scam so-called donations for an abandoned bomb shelter, which we would later learn what he was collecting money for. The same P.O. box you see with the Internal Revenue Service, the same P.O. box you see with the state tax authorities in Pennsylvania. Okay, let's go to August 2015. Now remember, Umar says he had no idea. He had no idea there was a tax exempt status. So look at the P.O. box, people. You have the feds. And the state tax authority sending Umar mail. And he's using the same P.O. box. You see it. Okay, so now we're moving over to January 2016. Do you want to take three guesses at what P.O. box Umar is using? The first three guesses don't count. So you get three free guesses. The same P.O. box you've been looking at at the other screen. Now we're going to November 2017. The same you've been looking at at every screen I just posted. And let's not forget the tax exempt status for FDMG slash Umar was revoked in 2017, specifically August 2017, after being given notice that they met criteria for automatic revocation in May of 2017. So 
Umar goes and says that most of the donations received have been through the mail, and he continues to say that. When you look on the GoFundMe, we only raised 160, but most of my donations have been mail in checks. And most of my donations have been mail in checks. Most of my donations have been mail in checks. If that's the case, why in the hell is he so desperately putting up GoFundMe's and Cash Apps? And by the way, why the hell is that Cash App still up? That's another video I have to do. But that's a lie. He's desperate for crowdfunding setup. He is a bald-faced liar. He wants people to think that most of the donations have come through the mail. Even if they haven't, that's still mail fraud, people. That is mail fraud either way you look at it. And who was going to believe that Umar thought it was more practical to run back to Philly to go to the P.O. box while he was traveling all around the world with the hyena yelps. Even the hyena yelps that didn't exist, that keyboard musician pointed out very clearly, most of these hyena yelps never popped off. Now, hear me clearly, I never stated that Umar didn't travel to those places. I simply point out that Umar would rather waste money, steal money to travel any and everywhere versus staying in a hellacious hazmat crib that we saw the conditions he was living under. That's what Umar was doing. And now he wants us to believe he thought it was practical to run back and forth to Philly to check a P.O. box. Get the hell out of here. We know Umar did go to the P.O. box. We know for sure he went to the P.O. box, but of course he went there and he saw everything and anything except for the IRS's information about revoking the non-profit status or issuing the non-profit status. Umar is full of shit, people. He will say any and everything to get money. That's his only gig he has going. Now the latest is lying on the Internal Revenue Service, which can easily be debunked, which I so clearly demonstrated for you. I just hope the IRS is listening very, very carefully about the lies that Umar continues to spin. They're all documented. It's a matter of time. Once he owes them enough money for them to be royally pissed off about, then they'll come after him. And I think the time is drawing near. Meanwhile, we should not stop exposing the truth. The truth is what it is. What the hell would Umar get mad at us for telling the truth? Umar and his two remaining flunkies don't want us telling the truth because it'll bring an end, a final end, to the scam bagging, to the affinity fraud, to the criminal behavior that has gone on for far too long. Stay the course, people. Most of all, never relinquish your hold on heeding the warning. Fire. Be where.